So in our previous video, we established what DNA was. It's genetic material, it's found in chromosomes, but we had that overarching question of whether or not chromosomes, which possess both DNA and protein, whether or not DNA is the genetic material that's passed on, or whether or not it's the proteins that are passed on. And of course, we realized that it is the DNA, and we know that today, but again, I want you to imagine yourself 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago with these experiments in mind. We established through Fred Griffith that something was causing a transformation. And let's continue to look at that something that we put in quotes as we continue our look at the experiments in this introduction to DNA. Another important experiment was conducted by three people, and it is uh, going to be labeled by their names. It's called, it was referred to as the Avery MacLeod and the last guy was McCarty experiment. So, again, three geniuses way ahead of their time that were able to establish something very, very interesting in 1944. Now, of course, this research is going to help uh, sort of support the DNA theory. And we now, of course, know that DNA is the genetic material. And let's see how Avery, McLeod, and McCarty support it. So let's do this again, very nice and dramatic. The experiment in a nice dramatic voice. The experiment, what did they do? Well, their experiment was very simple. Number one, they lysed what are known as S cells. You guys know what S cells are, of course. S cells are those of the cells that come from a strain of bacteria known as pneumonia, uh, the, as known as streptococcus pneumoniae, and those S cells are those that are smooth. And they just opened them up. Lysed means they opened them up and just took all of their innards out. So these cells are opened up and now lysed. What they did next was very interesting, and it's something that you should understand from, I believe it was, cell biology and cell structure. What they did next was they separated each of those components that are within that cell. They separated cell components, and in order to do this, and in doing this, they were able to figure out that the cell had the following things. It had lipids, Okay, those are just those fats that we've talked about before. Also had proteins. Um, they also saw some polysaccharides. Of course, they saw polysaccharides, right? It's a smooth, virulent strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae. You should be able to understand that. And they also saw some nucleic acids, which I'll just write down as Na. So, now, you have these things, and how does this relate back to our overarching question? Is it proteins or is it DNA? In step three, what they did was very interesting. They tested each for the ability, each for, and each I mean lipid, protein, polysaccharide, nucleic acid, each for ability to transform. Remember that transforming principle that Griffith established? Well, he established that principle. Avery McLeod and uh, McCarty were like, okay, let's see if we can build upon that. This is what science is all about, building upon prior knowledge. So what they said was, I'm going to test lipids, proteins, polysaccharides, and nucleic acids all individually and see which one of these can do that transformation. Test it each for ability to transform um, others, let's say, in the sense that will one of these things transform a cell? And in step four, what they realized was only, only, who do you think out of these four were able to do the transformation? The nucleic acids, of course. Only nucleic acids, Na, um, thus DNA, because DNA is comprised of nucleic acids, deoxyribonucleic acid, hopefully that connects. Only nucleic acids, thus DNA, could transform could transform. It's the only thing that could drive transformation. And thus, it must be genetic material. So that's Avery, McLeod, and McCarty. The next experiment that we want to look at is done by Hershey and Chase. So we're going to write this down as uh, Hershey, Chase, and no, this is not the same Hershey that has the candy Okay. Uh, everybody always asks that. This is Hershey Chase. Their experiment was done in 1952. So once again, look at this sort of uh, buildup that we have from 1920s to 1940s to 1950s. Hershey and Chase are going to really drive home the fact that DNA is our genetic material. 
So, Hershey and Chase were two biologists that studied T2 bacteriophage. This is a very genius experiment. I really, really like this one. T2 bacteriophage. If you're not familiar with T2 bacteriophage, very simply, T2 bacteriophage is a bacterial virus. It's a virus that infects bacteria. That's why it's called the bacterial phage. Phage means virus. So, it's a specific one called T2 bacteriophage. Its structure is very unique in the sense that it literally fits our debate perfectly. Its structure consists of a DNA core with a protein exterior, with a protein, um, we can state a protein coat is a better way. Viruses are, all they are is DNA with protein wrapped around it, protein protecting the DNA. So how does this relate back to our argument? Now, of course, the two players in our argument are here, but how does it relate back? What we have to understand with viruses is a very basic virology of the infection process that bacteriophages are known to do. And Hershey and Chase knew this. This is background information. They knew all this. The infection process of a bacteriophage is known to be that, we're going to draw this one down here, only a, I'm going to put this in quotes, a part. Remember how we said something in quotes? Now I'm going to say only a part of virus enters the cell. And what I mean by that is when a virus infects a bacteria, when a bacteriophage infects the bacteria, only a part of the virus enters the cell. We don't know which part of it is just yet. Only a part of virus enters cell and also reproduces. Hershey and Chase knew this, but they didn't know what this part was just yet. Is it the DNA core or is it the protein coat? And what they later also noticed is that upon completion of this entry and reproduction, the cell lyses. And once the cell lyses, the infected cell, I should say, cell lyses and opens up, it actually releases all the contents. It releases new viruses. So somehow, some way, the virus is able to infect, replicate, and then release itself. So something is governing all this complicated process. Is it the protein coat or is it the DNA core? Let's see what their experiment was. Now, I want to just reiterate that the goal, their goal, overarching goal was, um, is the quote-unquote part that we're describing, is that part referred to here, um, DNA, let me just extend that part, um, DNA or protein? That's our overarching question, and that's the question and goal that they were looking for. So, here we go. Big experiment time. Let's do the experiment right here. The experiment. The experiment was as follows. Very genius experiment indeed. What they decided was to do the following. They decided to trace, follow the path of DNA and protein. Trace the path of DNA and protein throughout the viral infection. They basically wanted to, you know, stalk what the DNA and the protein specifically does throughout viral infection. So, in order to stalk the DNA and protein while they're doing all this infection and crazy um, overall taking over of the cell and infecting and releasing itself and killing the cell, you have to figure out where DNA is during that process and where protein is in, during that process and see if it is the part that we're talking about. So in order to do that, you have to be a very smart scientist and you have to do something called tagging. What they did was they tag some viruses, some viruses, because they need to do two things. They need to figure out whether or not it's protein and DNA. So they tag some viruses with sulfur. Very random, right? Not at all. Sulfur is a very interesting component in this situation. What we say is the tag was specifically with something called 35S. This is radioactive sulfur. It's going to light up when it's uh, put underneath, let's say, an x-ray or underneath some sort of uh, radioactive light. It's going to light up. It's going to basically say that I'm here um, once it integrates itself within something. But what does sulfur integrate itself in? To be very specific, you chose sulfur. You can ask yourself, why sulfur? You know, why this? This is because sulfur is only in one of these. It's only in proteins. Specifically within amino acids, um, I believe they are cysteine and methionine, and it's not in DNA. So doesn't that make sense? If you want to follow the path of protein, highlight it, tag it, 
market with something that only proteins have so that you can see it pop up. Same concept in step three. Tag some viruses, but this time it cannot be sulfur, of course. This time it's with phosphorus. Phosphorus. And what we mean by tag in this situation, just like we did over here, is that we are going to tag it with a radioactive version of phosphorus called 32P. 32P, and you have to ask yourself again, same thing. I know this is a little bit repetitive, but why? Of course, this is because phosphorus is only in DNA, not proteins. So doesn't that make sense? You want to find out whether or not it's DNA or protein that's the part that enters the cell and reproduces and lyses and releases. So in order for that to happen, you have to do two distinct things, sulfur and phosphorus, two distinct items that are found only in proteins and only in DNA respectively, and then figure out the results. So what are the results of this experiment? Again, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to try to squeeze in as much as I can here and then probably extend our knowledge over here. So our overall result is the following. Absolutely genius experiment. You guys have to realize this was in 1952. First people to ever do this. First people to even try to do this. It's amazing to me that they came up with this final result. They figured out that the viral progeny, meaning that the viruses that lice and release themselves onto new cells, the viral progeny, all contained, what do you think? This radioactive label or this radioactive label? When they put it underneath an x-ray, which one did they see pop up? They, of course, saw the one that was with DNA only. All contained uh, 32P, radioactive 32P, not, not 35S. And thus, we know that finally our overall sort of completion from Hershey and Chase based off of Avery and McLeod, based off of Griffith, is that DNA is equal to genetic material. That is a fact, an absolute must. All three experiments prove this. I really hope you can appreciate the fact that both, I mean, all three of these guys were the first. They were the pioneers to complete these experiments in order to prove that genetic material is, of course, DNA. Now we can actually explore the structure of DNA and its replication process and all of its nuances because now we know for a fact that DNA is the genetic material.